Question 16. What are inline functions? Answer. The ARM compilers support inline functions with the keyword inline. These functions have a small definition and the function body is substituted in each call to the inline function. The argument passing and stack maintenance is skipped and it results in faster code execution. But it increases code size, particularly if the inline function is large or one inline function is used often. Question 17. Can include files be nested? Answer. Yes, include files can be nested any number of times, but you have to make sure that you are not including the same file twice. There is no limit to how many header files that can be included, but the number can be compiler dependent since including multiple header files may cause your computer to run out of stack memory. Question 18. What are the uses of the keyword static? Answer. Static keyword can be used with variables as well as functions. A variable declared static will be of static storage class and within a function, it maintains its value between calls to that function. A variable declared as static within a file, scope of that variable will be within that file but it can't be accessed by other files. Functions declared static within a module can be accessed by other functions within that module. That is, the scope of the function is localized to the module within which it is declared. Question 19. What are the uses of the keyword volatile? Answer. Volatile keyword is used to prevent compiler to optimize a variable which can change unexpectedly beyond compiler's comprehension. Suppose, we have a variable which may be changed from scope out of the program, say by a signal. We do not want the compiler to optimize it. Rather than optimizing that variable, we want the compiler to load the variable every time it is encountered. If we declare a variable volatile, compiler will not cache it in its register. Question 20. What is top half and bottom half of a kernel? Answer. Sometimes to handle an interrupt, a substantial amount of work has to be done, but it conflicts with the speed need for an interrupt handler. To handle this situation, Linux splits the handler into two parts top half and bottom half. The top half is the routine that actually responds to the interrupt. The bottom half on the other hand is a routine that is scheduled by the upper half to be executed later at a safer time. All interrupts are enabled during execution of the bottom half. The top half saves the device data into the specific buffer, schedules bottom half and exits. The bottom half does the rest. This way the top half can service a new interrupt while the bottom half is working on the previous. Question 21. Difference between RISC and CISC processor? Answer. RISC, Reduced Instruction Set Computer, could carry out a few sets of simple instructions simultaneously. Fewer transistors are used to manufacture RISC, which makes RISC cheaper. RISC has uniform instruction set and those instructions are also fewer in number. Due to the less number of instructions as well as instructions being simple, the RISC computers are faster. RISC emphasis on software rather than hardware. RISC can execute instructions in one machine cycle. CISC complex instruction set computer is capable of executing multiple operations through a single instruction. CISC have rich and complex instruction set and more number of addressing modes. CISC emphasis on hardware rather than software, making it costlier than RISC. It has a small code size, high cycles per second and it is slower compared to RISC. Question 22. What is our TOS? Answer. In an operating system, there is a module called the scheduler, which schedules different tasks and determines when a process will execute on the processor. This way, the multitasking is achieved. The scheduler in a real-time operating system, RTOS, is designed to provide a predictable execution pattern. In an embedded system, a certain event must be entertained in strictly defined time. To meet real-time requirements, the behavior of the scheduler must be predictable. This type of OS which have a scheduler with predictable execution pattern is called real-time OS RTOS. The features of an RTOS are context switching latency should be short, interrupt latency should be short, interrupt dispatch latency should be short, reliable and time-bound inter-process mechanisms should support kernel preemption. Question 23. What is the difference between hard real-time and soft real-time OS? Answer. A hard real-time system strictly adheres to the deadline associated with the task. If the system fails to meet the deadline even once, the system is considered to have failed. In case of a soft real-time system, missing a deadline is acceptable. In this type of system, a critical real-time task gets priority over other tasks and retains that priority until it completes. 
Question 24 What type of scheduling is there in RTOS? Answer RTOS uses preemptive scheduling. In preemptive scheduling, the higher priority task can interrupt a running process and the interrupted process will be resumed later. Question 25 What is priority inversion? Answer if two tasks share a resource, the one with higher priority will run first. However, if the lower priority task is using the shared resource when the higher priority task becomes ready, then the higher priority task must wait for the lower priority task to finish. In this scenario, even though the task has higher priority it needs to wait for the completion of the lower priority task with the shared resource. This is called priority inversion. Question 26. What is priority inheritance? Answer. Priority inheritance is a solution to the priority inversion problem. The process waiting for any resource which has a resource lock will have the maximum priority. This is priority inheritance. When one or more high priority jobs are blocked by a job, the original priority assignment is ignored and execution of critical section will be assigned to the job with the highest priority in this elevated scenario. The job returns to the original priority level soon after executing the critical section. Question 27. What is virtual memory? Answer. Virtual memory is a technique that allows processes to allocate memory in case of physical memory shortage using automatic storage allocation upon a request. The advantage of the virtual memory is that the program can have a larger memory than the physical memory. It allows large virtual memory to be provided when only a smaller physical memory is available. Virtual memory can be implemented using paging. Paging system is quite similar to a paging system with swapping. When we want to execute a process, we swap it into memory. Here we use a lazy swapper called pager rather than swapping the entire process into memory. When a process is to be swapped in, the pager guesses which pages will be used based on some algorithm before the process is swapped out again. Instead of swapping whole process, the pager brings only the necessary pages into memory. By that way, it avoids reading in unnecessary memory pages decreasing the swap time and the amount of physical memory. Question 28. What is kernel paging? Answer. Paging is a memory management scheme by which computers can store and retrieve data from the secondary memory storage when needed into primary memory. In this scheme, the operating system retrieves data from secondary storage in same size blocks called pages. The paging scheme allows the physical address space of a process to be non-continuous. Paging allows OS to use secondary storage for data that does not fit entirely into physical memory. Question 29. Can structures be passed to the functions by value? Answer. Passing structure by its value to a function is possible, but not a good programming practice. First of all, if we pass the structure by value and the function changes some of those values, then the value change is not reflected in caller function. Also, if the structure is big, then passing the structure by value means copying the whole structure to the function argument stack which can slow the program by a significant amount. Question 30. Why cannot arrays be passed by values to functions? Answer. In C, the array name itself represents the address of the first element. So, even if we pass the array name as argument, it will be passed as reference and not its address. 